is live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria, the capital city of the Western province of British Columbia here in Canada. I hope everybody is having an awesome week so far. Welcome to Carolina, our chat moderator. Hi, Baljeet. Welcome, members. Welcome, Kanupriya. Good to see Narinder and many others in the class. Hi, Yam. Hi, Rumi. Good to see many of you joining in for today's listening class. And that's exactly what we're doing in the class today. We are looking at listening for the IELTS for a band nine. Specifically, we're going to look at part one and part two of the uh, listening section. These materials, this lesson, it's brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Visit us there for the general IELTS. Visit us at gieltshelp.com. We've got an awesome discount code. Help is here. We are offering a 25% discount uh, using the code iScore9. And it's for three days only. So um, we don't always have these discount codes. If you've got an upcoming exam, I highly recommend using it. Again, the websites, they look like this. This is our academic website here. Click this red button to join the premium package. Then click the use coupon code, type in I score nine, hit enter, and you'll get that 25% discount. You'll see that at the top here. Um, same thing for general IELTS. Uh, click the red button. It's a one-time payment, lifetime access. We don't want to charge you every month. Uh, we don't want you to feel that pain. Uh, so you just pay once and you use it until you get the score you need on IELTS. It's well worth it. Again, click that big red button and then simply use the discount code iScore9 and you get a little bit of extra help to save you some money. And you're on your way with over 100 hours of video lessons, a fully interactive course, an application for your phone. Uh, you also get um, uh, lots and lots of videos, six original practice exams, so really worth your investment. Uh, we are an official IELTS test registration center and certified agents, so you're in great hands uh, with us, students. All right. Um, Again, our apps, uh, you can use our apps for sure. They link to the websites, uh, Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help. Get that on Google Play, Apple App Store. Um, Instagram for videos, vocabulary, it's all free, of course. IELTS underscore AE Help, G IELTS Help. Uh, so check us out on Instagram. We've got lots of people there interacting every day. And if you still have questions, Adrian at aehelp.com. Send me an email. I will help you out. Okay, students, we've got live classes. Live class schedules are on the channel in our comment uh, section on our posts. Uh, so subscribe to our channel. Uh, you can also see the live class schedule at the top of our YouTube channel now in the banner. All right. And again, this is listening practice. So we're going to listen right away. So I'm getting my headset here. If you've got a headset, use it. Um, I'm going to give you strategy as we're doing the listening. So um, practice makes perfect. Let's do strategy and practice together. I'm going to, um, let's see here, go to our uh, fifth exam today. So we're looking at our fifth exam. Again, these exams are available in your premium package. Uh, so we're looking at our fifth exam. This uh, audio is CD5 track one for those of you who have access uh, to our uh, materials. Okay. So uh, again, we're going to be doing all these questions. Uh, this is like the paper-based exam, but the computer-based exam, it's very similar. If you're doing this, you're going to kind of feel the same. Students, importantly, don't put your questions, or sorry, don't put your answers in the chat. Uh, it can get really confusing for other students, especially if you're giving wrong answers. So just put them on a separate piece of paper if you can, uh, or on in a separate document, and then we will 
go over these answers with strategy once we finish the listening. So this is going to be listening part one. Your goal is to try to get them all right. Listening part one should be the easiest part of your listening. So we're going to hop back to the website here and uh, I'm going to log into my student account at the top and now I have full access here. So I'm going to see all of the goodies. I get a nice tour of the website and all the goodies and that tour for now. And I have computer-based practice exams and I have a full interactive course here. Um, but right now what I'm looking for are the audio CDs right there. And for the audio CDs, I'm particularly looking for CD5 because it's the fifth exam. And I'm looking for audio number one. Uh, so again, uh, get ready here, students, uh, because uh, we are getting going on this right away. So here we go. This is from the website. Listen and answer the questions. Now here's a hint, students. When you hear the introduction, the, the instructions, it's gonna be at about a minute of the IELTS exam audio, take a peek at the topics of part two, three, and four. And I'm going to show you that as the first strategy here, okay? So use the instruction time wisely to take a sneak peek at part two, three, and four, and you're allowed to do that. Okay, if somebody in the exam is telling you don't do that, they're doing it wrong. You're allowed to do that. All right, here we go. This recording is copyrighted by Two Think One Solutions, Inc. and World ESL Tutors. You will hear several different recordings, and you will answer questions on what you hear. There will be time given to read the instructions and questions, and you will be given a chance to check your work. The recordings will be played only once. The test is made up of four sections. At the end of the test, you will have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Listening section one. You will hear a conversation between two people as one tries to return a defective product. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. You will see that there is an example. This time only, the conversation relating to this question will be played. Good afternoon. I bought a product from your store one week ago and I've been having difficulties getting it to work properly. Of course, sir. Do you have the original receipt from the purchase? The first piece of information I need is the date you purchased the product. Yes, I actually have it right here. I purchased it eight days ago on the 6th of July. The 6th of July. Great. The man says he purchased the item on July 6th. So this answer has been indicated for you. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Good afternoon. I bought a product from your store one week ago, and I've been having difficulties getting it to work properly. Of course, sir. Do you have the original receipt from the purchase? The first piece of information I need is the date you purchased the product. Yes, I actually have it right here. I purchased it eight days ago, on the 6th of July. The 6th of July. Great. I also need the name of the product as indicated on the receipt. Certainly. The receipt shows it as SOJO232XD. S O J O 232 XD? Yes, that's right. Okay, yes. I see the product in my records now. It is a 23 inch computer monitor? Yes, that's correct. Now tell me, did you buy the extended warranty on the monitor? No, I did not. I always feel like those warranties are a bit of a scam. 
Perhaps. Until you need the warranty? Perhaps. But there must be some sort of manufacturer's warranty, right? There may be. Let me check for you. Hmm. Okay. Yes, it seems there is a manufacturer's warranty. The warranty is for 60 days. Two months. Great. Then I shouldn't encounter any problems in returning it. Well, actually, we only accept returns for a week after purchase. Since you purchased the computer monitor eight days ago, you'll have to deal directly with the manufacturer. How annoying. What steps must I take then? Well, the company that makes the monitor has a depot in Birmingham. You must post it to them. Okay. Do you have their address? Yes. It's on Edgebastion Park Road and... Hold on. You'll have to spell Edgebastion for me. I've never heard of it. Of course. It is spelled E-D-G-B-A-S-T-O-N. And then the rest of the address? The address number is 89, and the unit number is 5. Okay, so 89 Edgebaston Park Road, Unit 5. That's right, and the postcode is B152RU. B152RU? That's right. You now have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 6 to 10. Great, but one concern I have is the cost of posting something as large as a computer monitor. Indeed. Such a product must weigh a few kilos and will certainly set you back some money to post. Let me see if the company takes such a problem into consideration. Well, that would certainly be nice if they did. Hmm. Yes, it seems they do. They have a program in place where they pay postage for the exchange of goods under manufacturer warranty or product recall. That's great news. What do I have to do to use this service? It's fairly simple. You just call their Birmingham Depot and request a prepaid postage voucher. Then you take the item to the post office along with the voucher and the post office will take care of the rest. Sounds simple enough. Do you have a phone number for the depot in Birmingham? Yes, you can reach them on 0121 Four nine six zero six three three. Oh, and be sure to call during business hours. They're open from ten in the morning until six in the evening. Ten until six. Understood. One final question: What would I have had to do to return the monitor if I had purchased the extended warranty from your store? <laughs> well, the process would have been much simpler, sir. You could have simply brought it into the return desk at your local store. We would have given you your choice of a new monitor, your cash back, or store credit in the amount of 110% of the original cost of the item. 110% store credit? Wow, that seems too good to be true. Well, company policy is that we want satisfied customers, and when they are not satisfied, we feel the need to compensate them for this in some small measure. Perhaps next time I'll buy the extended warranty. How much would it have cost on the monitor I bought? Only £20. £20 would have been well worth it to save me the trouble of dealing directly with the manufacturer. Well, now you know, sir. Indeed I do. Thanks again. That is the end of section one. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. All right, students, use that half minute to check your answers. I'm just going to stop the audio on our website here. And uh, we'll go through the answers together and we'll talk a bit of strategy while we're doing this. So let me hop back here and uh, let's look at these questions and answers. Uh, you probably noticed that, um, you know, I was guiding you. So I was showing you the pacing of the audio, how the questions come from the audio, at what time they come what you should be paying attention to. Uh, was everybody kind of following with me um, to feel the pacing? And even if you have really good English skills, this is why you want to do listening practice for the IELTS from our website. 
before you sit your exam so you can feel the pacing the rhythm um, of the audio and the questions okay so my first tip here today is practice okay because it's not you know even even if you have great english it's not something you do every day right so practice um the listening section so that you can uh, feel the pacing um, and frequency of the questions and answers okay you get kind of in the rhythm and then you realize that oh, okay here comes an answer here comes an answer there comes an answer there's the question there's the paraphrase so you get that kind of feeling right carolina is like whoops thumbs up um yeah medina says hola uh, medina in english hello um so yeah all right uh sai shri if the answer is two words and you only give one word and it's not the both words that are needed then you'll get it wrong for sure okay <laughs> tatiana says i passionately hate listening tasks <laughs> listening is an important skill though tatiana so you got to be able to do it all right now uh the other uh tip that i showed you is uh look at uh the um topics of parts uh, two, three, and four during the instruction time uh, to get your brain thinking about these in the background. Okay, your brain is an incredible piece of biological machinery. Um, the example here, anybody catch what uh, part two? So I scrolled there at the beginning when you're hearing the instructions about the listening section is copyright and it is. Da, 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 da. It's about a minute, actually more. It's about 80 to 90 seconds. Um, so anybody catch what part two of this uh, audio is going to be about? Well, Jeet says, I caught Michelangelo. Uh, Simran says um, a radio show. Cass says part two is going to be something about charities. Yeah. Yeah, it is a radio show, but the topic is charities and volunteering. Uh, part three. Anybody catch what that one's going to be about? So part three. What is part three going to be about? Munisa, I'm glad you're... Yeah, so Mian says something about trade. Yeah absolutely something about trade and it's part four that's going to be about um michelangelo famous famous uh architect painter michelangelo absolutely and we will be doing listening parts three and four of this exam in our next week's live classes so we're doing part one and two today so make sure you hang in there and remember these topics okay it's good you get your brain moving on that in english right in english in english did i say in english in english um all right so um yeah now um we're practicing we're doing good we're listening all right uh, we get an example uh, students you don't have examples so if you're looking at materials like uh, cambridge isles books uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine ten um, you're going to get these examples. You'll get these examples with our older exams as well. Just remember, no examples uh, given now uh, since 2020. Oh, yeah, two years have passed since they stopped doing that. I remember that year. So no examples given now since 2020. So you get right into part one uh, what product did the man purchase okay think about the statement the man purchased uh, in this case the woman says oh I see it now you purchased a uh. And then she gives the name of that product. Was it A, a computer, B, a computer monitor, or C, a television? Okay, uh, very good. So many of you are saying B, uh, it was a computer monitor. Great, uh, let's practice some active listening. Okay, active listening goes beyond 
just the answer, especially in part one. Um, so you can ask another question like, uh, what's the size of this monitor? Anybody catch the size of the monitor? Bonus question, bonus round, right? Um, so the woman says, yes, I see it now. You purchased uh, something sized. Yeah, very good students. A 23 inch computer monitor. That was the full answer, right? Nice, good for those of you who caught that. Excellent, nice memory. That's active listening, so good job. Um, Shivani, uh, Simran, Kelvin, Cass, nice listening. Well done, double thumbs up. But now, um, 23 inch computer monitor is what the man bought. Okay, what two pieces of information are required to access the record of the purchase? So the woman talks about this and she says, I need this and this. Uh, to find your purchase okay and uh, what was that was it the specific item SOJO232XD was it the date specifically the 6th of July or did she simply need to know the purchase date and the name of the product Arda says 2 and 3 are E and F uh, she needed the purchase date, yeah, and the name of the product, okay? Which are these, it seems a bit confusing, but the right answer, in fact, is the purchase date and the name of the product. And she says that, I need to know the name of the product and the date of purchase to find the record, okay? So correct answer is E and F. Um, Okay, because that's what information is required to access the record of the purchase specifically. It's a bit of a tricky one, I know, uh, but eh, sometimes IELTS listening has these bit of a tricky ones, okay? Okay, um, so then we had this complete the notes below no more than two words. Always pay attention to uh, the instructions, no more than two words and or a number, okay? So we're listening for the audio. We hear the speaker say, okay, the warranty's for two months, 60 days. The company has a location in Birmingham. Okay, that's great. And then they give the address. They spell it, they say it, they say it again. Okay, so uh, be patient. Here's another tip coming up, tip three. Be patient here. They will spell it and repeat it in most cases. Okay. So uh, Kelvin is saying it's Edge Bastion. Dublet Beck says it was Edge Bastion. Amrinder um, says more specifically it was 89 Edge Bastion. You don't need the comma, Amrinder. Um, uh, Kayan says 89 Park Road, but it was 89 Edge Bastion Park Road. Yeah. So the correct answer here is. 89, a couple dots there just to make sure you see the difference. 89 Edge uh, Bastion uh, Park Road, okay? So this is the correct answer. For those of you who got a very good number and name, Edge Bastion Park Road. Uh, postcode, what was that? So postcodes are really important. You get postcodes asked all the time in um, in a lot of Western countries. So I live in Canada, as many of you know, I basically use my postal code like 10 times each week um, for online purchases, for administrative tasks, for registrations, for proof of identity. So your postcode is like, all the time. Okay, so uh, B15, 2RU seems to be the popular answer. You don't need to worry about spaces, okay? Uh, for postcodes, 
or phone numbers. Okay, or credit card numbers. Don't worry about spaces, all right? B15, 2RU, Munisa, Tatiana. It's not E15, it's B15. B. Listen for that b bumbling sound. The b -b 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 -b. Okay, so it's B15, 2RU, not E15. Careful. Okay, listen carefully. On the website, there are listening to numbers and letters section in the audio CD, so check that out on the website. Okay. All right, um, so again, B152 RU, that is the correct answer. Questions six to seven, write no more than three words for each answer. Number six, in order to get free delivery on product returns, the customer must telephone the depot and request a prepaid something. I think the woman says, asks, ask for a, instead of request a, ask for a, that's her specific paraphrase there. So you get the answer by hearing the paraphrasing. In part one, the paraphrasing is quite simple. It's a lot trickier for the rest of the listening. Prepaid, uh, Lena says posted voucher. Simran says postage voucher. Simran, you are right. Vicky says it's a postage voucher. Yeah, word form is very important. Postage voucher. Um, postage uh, is the adjective form. So postage voucher, pay attention to word form. Okay, if you have the wrong word form, like post voucher or posted voucher, you get it wrong. Okay, um, all right. Uh, and then again, a little bit of dictation work here. What is the phone number for the depot? So who do you call? And it's not Ghostbusters in this case. Um, it's the postage voucher. You guess, I don't know if anybody caught that, but who are you gonna call? Ghostbusters. Um, if you're as old as me, you'd get that joke if you watched television back in the 90s. Um, but yeah, not the Ghostbusters. Uh, you call this number. Okay, and um, Mustafa says the number is 0124906333. Um, okay, um, Joaquin Castillo says uh, 0124906033. Tatiana, what is a postage voucher? It's a postage voucher, Tatiana. A postage voucher is basically prepaid postage. Um, it's a special envelope or it's a special sticker that they put on to the postage whereby it's paid for by the company, okay? Uh, banks will often mail another envelope within the envelope. That's basically a prepaid postage voucher uh, when you mail back like a check or something like that, okay? All right, so a voucher is a... Uh, a ticket of payment. Think about it that way. Okay. All right. Okay. Phone numbers. So it's 01 21 496 0633. Uh, you have to practice understanding and hearing phone numbers. I'm just putting the spaces in so you can clear clearly see it. Uh, because that's a big part of society, right? Especially when you move to a new country and you're meeting new people and you're registering for new places like university, um, then uh, you have to say your phone number and you have to hear the phone numbers of other uh, important uh, locations, people and such. So you gotta practice. Um, 0121496 or 0633, um, definitely pay attention, okay? All right, couple more. For how many hours is the depot open each day? That was coming really quick. All I had the chance to do is write it down real quick. You do have note paper. Okay, use the note paper. Next tip coming up. Boom. Um, tip. Yeah, maybe put that on a new line. So tip. Uh, use the note paper to catch important information. Uh, you have note paper in the computer-based exam as well. So get ready. Have that in front of you. Okay. Uh, for example. 
times and multi multiple choice questions. I'll show you that in a second with the next question. Okay. Um, so 10 to 6 uh, equals 8 hours, right? 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, 8 hours, correct answer B, right? Let's see. Shivani, Mustafa, uh, Vicky, uh, Mohan, very good. Um, Zohi, uh, use logic too. Uh, full time work, 8 hours. Most post offices don't have partial workers, or many of them don't. So, yeah, eight hours. Okay. Post offices aren't that popular these days since email. So, they're not going to be open all that long. Um, so, eight hours it is. And if you're in Canada, US, uh, that's about it. So, it's about eight hours, right? Okay. Um, so, 10, 11, to 12 one to two to three to six uh, it's eight hours okay uh, which three options three of them now these are coming quickly so what am I doing for this I'm taking notes take notes use logic okay that's how you solve these ones um, these were my notes I don't know about you but I took these notes okay uh, so new monitor was one of my options uh, cash back was another one of my options and 110 percent um, store credit it's like woohoo right store probably doesn't win or lose money they usually have more than a markup of 10 percent but you know they give you a little bit back and that's fantastic wow it's good business okay so uh, let's see what matches here exchange item for a new one that matches with new monitor so a looks good okay 100 percent store credit that does not match with my 110 percent uh free postage doesn't match with any of them cash back Ooh, cash back verbatim word for word d looking solid okay all right 110 percent store credit there i've got that number now that's looking fantastic uh 20 pounds Say what? 20 pounds? Definitely not. It um, doesn't make sense. Why would a store give you 20 pounds when you take something back? Uh, that's a bit weird. So uh, correct answer is A, D, and E. Manpreet has those right. Uh, Garav, also on the ball. Lila, very nice. Um, Bakrat, uh, yes. EDA, Baljeet, sure, works. Different order, same answer. Shivani, very good. Nicely done, okay. Uh, question number 10, choose the correct letters A, B, or C. The woman mentions an item that costs 20 pounds. What is this item? Is it a computer monitor? Is it the extended warranty? Is it the manufacturer's warranty? Students, last tip for this section, use logic, okay? Um, even if you miss an answer, in the IELTS listening oftentimes, Logic can still lead you to the correct answer. Um, 20 pounds for a monitor, uh, not likely. Uh, not since uh, the uh, 1960s or 40s when we didn't even have computer monitors. Ha ha ha, LOL. Um, I've never seen a computer monitor for 20 pounds. If you see a computer monitor for 20 pounds, Personal opinion, you probably shouldn't buy it. It might explode when you plug it in, okay? That seems way too cheap for a computer monitor, even for a used one. Um, if it's really, really used and really, really old, you should probably not buy it, okay? <laughs> All right, um, yeah, 40 bucks. Um, extended warranty, that looks good. Uh, manufacturer's warranty, in, as far as I know, it's free, okay? If anybody's charging you for manufacturer's warranty, they're ripping you off because it's always free, okay? Free, always. Uh, don't let anybody take you for a ride. To take someone for a ride means to rip them off. Um, free, always. Manufacturer's warranty is either included or doesn't exist. Extended warranty looks like the right answer, so logic tells me it's the right answer, okay? All right, I'm glad, get, glad some of you are getting my jokes a little bit, okay? 
All right, Bianca's like, Ugh. all right, um, good. So logic tells me it's B. There we go. Um, careful with it. So Woodle, not C, okay. All right. Okay, everyone. So uh, looking good. Uh, hopefully you all got a really good score on this. So remember, um, listening part one, your goal is to get nine or 10 correct because it is about to get more difficult. Okay, uh, part one is arguably by far the easiest uh, part of the listening. Okay, so if you got eight, it's all right, but you should be going for nine or 10. If you got five, you got to practice. Uh, students, we're gonna jump into section two. I'm going to hop back to our website, aehelp.com, where we're getting this audio right now. And uh, there we are, okay. And I'm going to play uh, CD5 track two. We're doing listening part two. <clears throat> we know that it is um, a radio talk show talking about charities. Listen carefully, because you have someone with the New Zealand accent coming up. IELTS will have accents from Canada, Australia, New Zealand, mostly the UK, mostly England, but uh, don't be surprised if it's one of the other uh, Commonwealth countries. So careful with that. Uh, that's because there's a lot of mixture of people among those Commonwealth countries, okay? All right, um, so here we go everyone with um, uh, listening part two, listen and answer the questions. Now turn to section two. Take some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Listening section two. You will hear a recording of a radio news magazine discussing the importance of doing good in the community. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now listen carefully to the interview and answer questions 11 to 16. Hello, I'm Emma Robertson and I'd like to welcome our listeners to Beyond the Lens the programme that aims to dig deeper on issues in culture and society. Today, we have Professor Hudson McMahon from the University of Bristol's Department of Social Policy. Hello, Professor McMahon. Do you want to tell us a little about what you'll be presenting today? Of course, Emma. But first, I'd like to thank you for having me on the show. My wife and I are both avid listeners of Beyond Lens, and it's a bit of a thrill to be on the show. But I digress. Today, I want to talk about the importance of doing good in the community and in society. There are many ways of doing this, but the two most common ways are volunteering and giving to charity. However, these methods of improving community and society have an important difference. While volunteering one's time is almost always a positive for society, giving to charity is significantly more problematic. Problematic, Professor McMahon. It would seem to me that giving to charity is always a positive for society. We celebrate those among us who are the greatest donors to charity. Yes, and in general, it is warranted. I do want to clarify. In general, giving to charity is good, but one must be very careful for two reasons. First, some charities do not do sufficient amounts of charitable good per pound. And second, some charities receive too much money that could be spent better on other causes. Let me discuss each of these in turn. This seems to me a rather radical thesis. It seems that way, but I hope to convince you otherwise by the end of the program. Now getting back to charities. Some charities simply do not give a lot of their received monies to the actual performance of good acts. For instance, some charities utilize less than 10% of their donations on actual charitable activities. The rest goes to salaries, 
promotion and other overhead costs. So for a donation of £100, it may be the case that less than £10 actually goes to helping someone. That sounds terrible, but it still helps people, right? Well, yes, but as charitable givers, we should try and reward those charities who do most good with the least amount of money. By that I mean that those thinking of donating to charity should do research on a charity before giving to the cause. There are other charities where more than 50% of donations go to the end cause. These charities are much more deserving of your patronage. You now have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 17 to 20. Another reason to be discerning when it comes to your choice of charities is what I call the relative utility of a charitable donation. Hmm, let me take a guess here, Professor McMahon. Is the relative utility of a donation how much good it does relative to other donations? That's just about it, Emma. The relative utility of a donation is how much good a donation does per amount spent. For instance, the disease MND, motor neuron disease, was in the news in recent years and MND charities received a windfall of donations. This sounds all well and good, but there is a problem. Unlike, say, heart disease, MND does not affect very many people. While it would be wonderful to cure the disease, there are better allocations of our limited charity funds. Wait. So you're saying it was bad for people to give to MND charities? Not quite. Only that it was suboptimal. Because there is limited supply of money given to charity each year, it is important that it is used at least somewhat optimally. And allocating overwhelming amounts of money to a disease that affects very low percentage of people is extremely suboptimal. That's very interesting, Professor McMahon. So how can our listeners try and optimize their charitable gifts? First of all, don't be caught up in viral social media campaigns. Instead, use such moments to remind yourself of the importance of giving to charity in general, and not just to niche causes with good promotion. And second, do your research. Before you donate, look up how much of a charity's donation go to the actual end goal. Additionally, look up how many people are affected by the charity's end cause. The more people there are affected, and the worse they are affected, the more likely you should be to donate to that cause. It is all about maximizing good in the world. That certainly sounds like a noble goal, but if everyone does it... That is the end of section two. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. And students, always use that half minute to check your answers. Let me just stop the audio here on the website and we'll hop back and look at these uh, questions and answers together now, just like we did for part one. And then I'll give you a bit more strategy uh, looking at these questions. So here the first question uh, was, um, here we go, uh, write no more than three words for each answer. What is the name of the radio show? So they said it twice. Okay, it was two times, uh, once by the man, once by the woman. Okay, and Amrinder says it's beyond the lens. Uh, yeah, um, Bakrat says it's the beyond lens. Okay, uh, it is the name of the show, so it has to be capital. It's beyond the lens, so beyond the lens of the camera, right? That's where they got the idea for the name of the show. So going beyond the lens, uh, beyond the lens. Uh, Cass, very good. All capital letters is good. Um, L and the B have to be capitals here because it's the name of the show, recognizing that it's a proper noun. It's not a common noun, it's a name. 
Okay, and then they introduce the show and they're talking about charities mostly and about, you know, giving to society. And they say, well, there are basically two ways. One is volunteering and the other is charitable giving. And it was really important that you understand the difference between uh, these two. So volunteering is giving a person's time, right? Uh, charitable giving is giving a person's money. So that's the important difference between volunteering and charity. And then they uh, talk about, you know, what are these uh, ways to contribute to society? Uh, Canada is very, very culturally focused on volunteering. Uh, basically, all Canadians uh, volunteer at some part or some point in their lives in some way or another. I myself have volunteered numerous times um, throughout school, outside of school. It's a part of school curriculum. So these are kind of important points. Uh, by the way, for those of you applying for schools, master's, PhD, immigration to Canada, having volunteer work on your resume or CV or in your application looks very good. Canadian officials love to see volunteer efforts. Uh, because it shows altruistic behavior. Okay, that's just a little side note or tip for all of you who are applying for visas to Canada. It's also true for the US, UK, Australia, by the way. Okay. Um, currently, I'm, well, but she was asking, sir, are you also volunteering? Kind of, I guess. These lessons are free. I mean, it does help us sell our products, Pachu, but in some way, it is a free lesson for many people. So, in some ways, yes. Um, okay. So, um, first one, number 12, affects fewer people but may be highly inefficient. So, few people, highly inefficient, um, that is a contrast that wasn't given. The correct answer for 12 is C, it's neither, okay? Uh, neither of these necessarily affect few people. So even charities, like if you think of UNICEF, for example, or World Wildlife Federation or Greenpeace, um, it affects a lot of people, right? Can be problematic for various reasons. Calvin got the first one, right? That was good. Um, so number 12 was C. It's neither. Careful with negatives, like fewer people. Okay. Uh, number 13 can be problematic for various reasons this one was a fairly easy one this one was b okay so uh b is charities right and that's basically what the show is about this man is explaining why it's problematic uh, for various reasons right so uh that one you should definitely get. It's almost always a positive action for society. That one was A, volunteering. That's why uh, certain societies like Canada love uh, volunteering, right? Because it's almost always positive. You're really helping people when you give your time to assist the elderly, children, animals. Subject to many overhead costs discussed in detail. Again, it's B. Uh, so this one wasn't this these questions and answers weren't too too bad. Hopefully you got them. Okay And then this one I got a bit of the answer. So what are the two reasons charities can be inefficient? Uh, there was something about 10% or less of money going to the end goal and I realized that B was the answer there and then overhead costs overhead costs were like a uh, salaries promotions um so the best answer here uh, was uh, C, promotions. A lot of money is spent on advertising, millions of dollars, right? Um, so B and C, B and C. Okay, uh, so then we got into this flow chart here. Now with the flow chart, you really have to pay attention to the given information and then the choice information. And here you have a duality, right? So here on one side, you have the positive and on the other side, you have the negative example. Positive example, uh, you have heart disease, heart disease uh, affects a lot of people. And then uh, because if you're giving money to support, uh, you know, helping people with heart disease, it's good use of money. 
Conversely, so opposite to this, MND, F, affects not as many people, not as many as going to be few people, and so it is an inefficient use of funds, right? So if you look at the contrasts in this kind of a split flow chart, again, use logic, okay? So observe the logic there. And I can see some good answers. Uh, Baljeet, make sure that you, know, you do write F in the answer sheet, not MND, okay? Otherwise, very good. Lastly, question 20. Um, the uh, presenter is talking about, you know, what's the main goal of giving to charities? And I mean, if you think about the overall, oftentimes the last question in a listening section looks at the overall context. So uh, it's maximizing good, right? That's basically what he's preaching in this whole uh, radio show is that you have to use your money wisely so that you maximize the value of dollar spent right and so if each dollar you know if you give one dollar to a charity and it buys one slice of bread for one person versus you give a dollar to another charity and it buys 10 loaves of bread for a community of people obviously you're going to go for the uh, charity that can buy 10 loaves of bread right so it's about maximizing good so C was the correct answer. Now for part two students, you're going for at least like seven correct. Um, okay, in part two, uh, your goal, your goal should be to get, take this off so I'm not screaming at you. Um, it should be to get at least seven answers correct because you still have the most difficult part three and part four coming up, right? Okay. Um, let's see, so me and me, Yen says, I heard the man said this is an additional goal. Maximizing good is the main goal. Me, think about the whole uh, part two, right? He says that multiple times, okay? Uh, doing research alone doesn't make sense. It's not really going to uh, do anything but when you do research uh, the goal of doing research again logic right the goal of uh, doing research is to maximize your donation okay so again think of logic the end logic all right Okay, everyone, so that's it. Keep your marks, uh, check this out. Again, this was coming from our website. Uh, next week, we'll do part three and part four in our live classes, okay? So um, if you wanna get the jump on next week's classes, uh, you can uh, purchase our premium IELTS package by going on our website and then clicking on the big uh, red uh, button. I'll show you where that is. So uh, when you uh, click on that big red button that's just above my head there, um, then uh, you can use that discount code that I showed you at the start of class. Click on use coupon code I score nine and you get a 25% discount. Then you get access to six full practice exams, over 100 hours of video lessons in HD, fully interactive course, okay? So uh, yeah, use it improve uh, general IELTS same idea gieltshelp.com you'll see the website here click the red button there and students tomorrow uh, we're continuing for our members on our YouTube channel with task 2 that with the introduction that we wrote today um, and then um, we'll finish that task 2 tomorrow and we're going to do speaking part 2 with everybody okay so and you get a chance to practice your speaking real time so that's gonna be really exciting using the website okay uh, Munisa thank you for all those hearts back at you super it's awesome okay um, so again aehelp.com for academic IELTS gieltshelp.com for general IELTS we do offer the world's most popular IELTS preparation programs so uh, join and be together with us be merry get the best scores possible 
I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from beautiful Victoria. Thank you, Carolina, for moderating the chat. Thank you, members, for your support. Thank you, viewers. I hopefully will see all of you beautiful people tomorrow. Bye for now.